Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, so uh, grateful and happy to see you uh, here this morning. Um, tomorrow is uh, Labor Day in the United States of America, uh, the first Monday of September. Uh, it was actually established in um, 1894, so over 100, 100 years ago. And it's to honor the contributions that workers make to the prosperity of the country. Now, it's an interesting time in history because in the 1800s, this was a, really the booming time of the Industrial Revolution. Um, it's, it started in the late 1700s in England, but it really spread around the world like from 1840 to the 1900s. So technology, uh, things like machinery and um, factories, they create a whole nother level of being able to produce and output materials. And the countries became much more prosperous suddenly. And so those who are working in the factories uh, and you know, this mass production of, of materials became really important. So that's why they decided, they established Labor Day as a federal holiday. So I want to work with this, this definition. I figured let's, let's explore this idea about labor and work. So I'm going to use the definition of labor or work is expending physical or mental energy to produce something, to make something happen, to do something. So let's, if you think about it, labor and work is about producing things. When we're producing things, you know, we're creating, we're making a difference in the world. The other side of that is consuming. Now, in order to produce, you need to have a consumer, right? Someone who takes it. But if all we are doing is consuming, then that's a problem. You know, it's the you know, lack of vitality in our life. So we want to be on both sides. We want to be producing and consuming, giving and receiving. Amen? Giving and receiving. Producing. So let's be producers. So today, or tomorrow, Labor Day, is celebrating producers. So let's look at the, some of these spiritual values about labor. So especially from our unificationist worldview, work and labor is about fulfilling one of the great purposes of our life. And that's the uh, purpose of dominion. So we pull this from this book. This is from the first chapter of Genesis, the 28th chapter. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So as unificationists, we, we talk about this as the three great purposes that God has given to us, the three great blessings that God has given us in our life. The first purpose, to be fruitful, is to become a person of true love, to grow up, to mature ourselves, to develop our character, in particular, to come to know God and become one in heart and mind with God. Jesus called this the greatest commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you know, like we sang in the song today. That's our first purpose, is connecting to God and maturing and developing our amazing, unique qualities as a representative of God in this world. The second one, to multiply, is from an individual level, then to the family, which includes you know, our extended family, friends, the community, to the nation, the world, and all people. The second one is really talking about our love relationship with all people. So Jesus called that the second great commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. So loving people. So first thing, we become fruitful by maturing ourselves and loving God. We multiply by having relationships, starting with the family, all the way out to the world, of love with our neighbor, loving others. The third great purpose is having dominion over the things of the creation. We subdue the earth. We take dominion over creation through our work, through our labor, through our activities. And that dominion includes dominion over ourselves, right? Self-control, self-discipline. Because in order to work, you've got to 
get your mind and body united together to work, and also dominion over the material things in the material world. The amazing thing is God designed us to be producers, to be creators, actually co-creators with God, to be able to participate with God. God's looking forward to seeing each one of us be like a little God, resembling God's creative nature. And that's dominion. That's the third great purpose. And this is our work. This is our labor. This is our efforts, whatever we're doing. Now this is, I'm going to read this quote. This is from um, a book called Educating for True Love. It was produced by the uh, International Education Foundation, which is basically an organization work to, prevent, to promote character education uh, in schools. And this particular uh, uh, section is applying uh, Father Mother Moon's thought on education and culture. This is from the chapter on creativity and stewardship and the section called Loving the World Through Work. So let me read. A materialistic view of work focuses on providing for survival, getting practical things done, making money. Amen? <laughs> a more complete view sees human work as a reflection of divine activity, transforming, serving, contributing, creating. And its ultimate goal is to glorify God and to help his beloved other children. In constructive human labors, God is working through his children to complete and embellish his act of creation. So, of course, uh, there are, there's the external purpose for work, right? We need to work to make a living, to make money, to survive, basic things. But having this much more complete and rich view of life, that it's about realizing our co-creatorship with God, brings so much more fulfillment uh, in, in our lives when we reflect and we think about the deep meaning of what it means to work. So then the, the second value is contributing to a greater purpose, something larger than ourselves. Um, primarily, the way that most of us contribute to society is through our work, through our job. Now, those that are, don't work we're contributing, like in the household, making a difference, taking care of the home, taking care of the household. You know, there's a lot of labor, a lot of work that's done that's unpaid, right? <laughs> Moms, stay-at-home dads, you know that, right? There's a lot of labor that's done as volunteers that's making a difference in the world, that's contributing to a larger purpose. Every job that exists is about contributing to something larger, about benefiting others. You know, um, a janitor creates a cleaner environment for the people you know, the, the, where he's cleaning. A stockroom person is making things orderly for those who are managing orders, or uh, a delivery person who's bringing stuff to us, or a waiter or a waitress, or anyone who's providing a service is clearly making our lives better by helping to take care of us. Every profession produces value for something larger, beyond ourselves as individuals. This is where we become producers instead of just consumers. So when we focus on that, there's much more energy, much more life when we go to work in what we're doing. I really love this verse. This is uh, from St. Paul. It's in the, um, uh, the book of Colossians. It's the third chapter. Paul writes, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So working for God in whatever job we have, in whatever it is we're doing. You know, if we look at all of our work, all of the things that we're doing, and we seek out that meaning. How is this contributing? How does this connect to what God needs done in the world? 
without finding that meaning in our work, our life, it, it dries up and, and actually we suffer. So this, this leads actually to the, to the third point, which is the value of work and labor is that it helps us grow individually and find satisfaction in life. We learn and grow from our work experiences, both the good ones and the bad ones, and develop ourselves. Whenever we produce something, especially if we invested our heart in it, and we see that result, the natural feeling that comes with that is joy and satisfaction. When we do a job and do it well, there's this sense of joy and satisfaction. So understanding that the value of labor, of course, you know, we get paid, we get money, we, you know, this kind of thing. But the real deep meaning is that we're making a difference in the world and we're bringing joy to ourselves, fulfilling that third purpose of having dominion over the things of creation. So this next quote, it's from the World Scriptures and Teachings of Sun Young Moon. Nice, big, fat book here. <laughs> this is compiled from scriptures from all of the world's uh, religious traditions. Thick. It's got lots of content in here. I highly recommend this book. You can get it online. It's, it's an amazing resource. Boy, looking through this. Anyway, I want to read from the, this is the, from the, um, the chapter on society and particularly talking about labor. No society can be prosperous unless its members are educated to have a work ethic and have the opportunity to better themselves through their labor. A practical function of religion is to encourage the virtues that make for economic success. Industry, thrift, dependability, responsibility, and integrity in the workplace, and the love of one's job. As people of faith, we're always working on putting these qualities of hard work, responsibility, dependability, uh, into practice. So I love this quote from, uh, this is from the uh, book of Proverbs, but it's the New Living Translation of this uh, Proverbs 12, 24. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy, become a slave. Kind of the bottom line there, right? If you work hard, you'll naturally become a leader. People will look to you, people will see. Oh. But if you're just lazy, then you're just, you become a, a slave. People have to tell you what to do and push you around or whatever. But if you work hard, you take responsibility. In a word, as we take ownership of whatever job we have, if we feel responsible and work hard for whatever we're doing, we own it, then we gain incredible power. But if we're always reluctant, then we're just like drudgery. It's like being a slave. No power, no energy, and resentment that we're being forced to do these things. So let's work hard and become leaders. And don't be lazy. Don't become slaves. So for Labor Day, you know, the focusing, Labor Day a lot of times focuses on unions and things like that. Actually, nowadays, Labor Day is, it's the end of summer. We have the Labor Day sales. You know, we have the day off tomorrow, so it's Labor Day picnics and outings and barbecues. But in all those things, remember the true value of work and labor. Through work, you know, it doesn't have to be paid work. It's all volunteer work. It's also even work in the home. Anything that we do that produces something, this is labor. This is work. So especially when we're making a difference in the world, we're fulfilling that purpose of, of dominion over the things of the creation. And we're contributing to something larger than ourselves. So much more fulfillment than just, oh, it's all for me, it's all for me. You know, that makes us sick and, and lose power and lose happiness. But when we're contributing to something that's bigger than us, we become connected to something that's larger than we are. And that's where we're going to find our real growth, because we'll be challenged. At least I get challenged a lot in work. 
And if you know if you find yourself in a work situation that you really can't find joy, well, I encourage you, you know, look for another one. You know, sometimes we take on jobs that are really hard, but if we can find joy in them, find meaning even in the, the drudgery or difficult ones, okay, I've got to do it to make a living, to get money, I'm working for changing my time for dollars. But if we have the heart of even this menial task that I'm doing, I'm doing for God, I'm doing for the company, I'm doing for all the people that will benefit from the work that I'm doing. Then real satisfaction can come in any work situation. So uh, let me conclude with this from the Chun Sung Jung, Father of Mother Moon's words. This is particularly uh, the, the book on life of faith and training. Even though your field of work may be limited, most important is who is directing your labor. You must work with the conviction that God himself has called you for the sake of the nation or the world. Although your environment may restrict you, you should believe that you work for the sake of the nation or the world. Even though you are only one person, you ought to work with that conviction. Amen? Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, we thank you so much for your design of this world, that you've given us this, these great purposes and design for our life to become people of true love, to become people who have relationships of love with all the people in the world around us. And particularly, as we're remembering and going to be celebrating Labor Day, you've given us dominion over all things of creation. Heavenly Parent, we pray that you can guide us, that we can truly use our skills, abilities, talents, uh, treasures for the, a larger purpose, that we can make a difference in the world and find that individual satisfaction and joy and fulfillment as we come more and more to reflect you, your own creative and loving nature. Heavenly Parent, we thank you so much. We know many times we're facing challenges and we seek to always see things from your heart and your perspective. So, Heavenly Parent, we want to come before you, even this, this morning. And as we take a look at, at what's happening in our lives right now, and we see those areas in our life where, where there's fear or there's confusion or there's discouragement or despair, Heavenly Parent, we pray that your heart and your love can help, help us gain the perspective on that situation. Please fill our hearts and minds with your love, with your care, and your thought. We're so grateful that you're always with us. You're our partner in everything we do. And we thank you again and determine today to be people who can multiply your love through our witnessing, through our sharing, through all the things we do to make a difference in the world around us. So together, as your sons and daughters, and as blessed central families, we offer up this prayer in ourselves to you. Amen and on you.